When we were working with Destin and his high-speed camera, we tried one of our favorite experiments, Neil's burning cauldron. Now the demonstration consists of two parts. The first one is taking a metal vessel and pouring in liquid oxygen. When you watch it normally, it's just pouring stuff out of a thermos flask. What's interesting in high speed is that as it goes in, the oxygen actually breaks up. There's been a lot of research by different people about how liquids fall, and it's quite complicated because it's a combination of surface tension, viscosity. But here you have the added complication that the liquid is very cold compared to the air, so it's actually boiling. When it goes in, there's a sort of cloudiness, but that's just the water vapor in the air. You end up with a rather foggy looking liquid. The second part of the experiment is dropping in a piece of hot charcoal. The first thing that quite surprised me is that as this piece of charcoal comes down and hits the surface, it actually bounces up again. But because it bounces up again, and presumably the hot charcoal has vaporized a bit more oxygen, it actually starts burning when it's in the air. And as it comes down again, it burns quite brightly. think about it for a moment. You've got a very hot piece of charcoal on top of a very cold liquid. So the liquid immediately under the charcoal will be boiling and will be generating gas, which probably causes the charcoal almost to float above the surface of the liquid. If you look carefully, you can see that the charcoal keeps on burning brightly and then it goes dimmer again and then bright and dim, a sort of pulsing. And I think, and again, I haven't done any control experiments, but it seems quite likely that what happens is that when it's sitting on oxygen gas, it burns rather more brightly. It uses up that gas and then sinks down onto the surface of the liquid. The hot charcoal vaporizes some more and it starts burning again, lifted up on the oxygen cloud. So it goes up and down. But the key point is that I, as a chemist, see that something that I thought was fairly straightforward is actually more interesting and more complicated than I thought. Not to inflame things or try and make too much of the chemistry-physics rivalry, yeah. But it seems like in some of these talks we have, it's like the chemistry is well understood, but it's the physics that's really interesting and in adding this extra dimension when we see it at high speed. I think that's a very sensible point because very often in the short term, on short time scales, it is the physics, the mixing of the reaction or the viscosity or whatever that determines what happens. And you could argue that it's really chemical engineering rather than physics, but it is this combination of the chemical process and the physical one that is very interesting. It is important because many of the phenomena we observe, even when we're looking slowly, is a result of these two effects, but we don't always realize they're going on.